So the problem here is that there is a massive overconsumption of existing antibiotics and a real shortage of new ones, are leading to the emergence of highly resistant bacteria which can spread from farms through the air, through soil, through water, manure, and consumption of contaminated meat and animal products. So then you've got antibiotic resistant infections already spreading globally. So if urgent action isn't taken, there is a real danger that antibiotics will no longer fight what are commonplace bacterial infections like pneumonia or tuberculosis. Half of the antibiotics produced globally and used in agriculture are there for animals to grow faster or used prophylactically to prevent rather than treat disease. And despite this worldwide concern, the real worry is that antibiotic use in agriculture is actually set to increase by two-thirds by 2030. So this problem is only going to get worse, not better. Already, national governments are taking action and trying to, to work on dealing with the tackle, the overconsumption of antibiotics. And they're doing it through, through health and public policy and agricultural uh, policy work. And, and, and that's fine and, and it's, an, it's important. The World Health Organization is working on uh, organizing an international coordinated effort, um, a, a response through a global action plan on antimicrobial resistance. Um, and in fact, in September in New York, there is a UN high-level meeting on exactly this subject. Our concern is it's just not moving fast enough. Government action alone is just not enough to deal with what is really a, a, an urgent global issue. So what we want to see is multinational food chains, uh, these large businesses uh, with global supply chains, they're in a position to drive these changes even faster than, than legislation. And that's why CI has been calling on Kentucky Fried Chicken, Subway and McDonald's to make global time-bound commitments to stop the use of antibiotics in their poultry and meat supply chains. So why are we calling on McDonald's, Subway and KFC to, to make these commitments? Between them, these, these global organisations have more than 100,000 restaurant chains worldwide. They're global market leaders, they're household brands and they can show leadership and they can set standards for their industry. Now, if you look at McDonald's and Subway, and, and we took a close look um, earlier this year, they have made some commitments to reduce the use of antibiotics in supply chains in North America, and, th and that's a good start, and we applaud that. So they can take action, and they are interested in these issues, and they should be, given that they are global brand names. But this is a global public health crisis, and, and antibiotic-resistant bacteria, they don't respect national borders. Uh, reducing the use of antibiotics in supply chains in North America just isn't enough. Reducing it in a few countries isn't enough. These three chains need to make global commitments to really deal with this issue. So Consumers International and its members have been publicly calling for international action on tackling the overuse of antibiotics since 2014. And consumers themselves are waking up to the dangers posed by the consumption of meat from animals that are routinely given antibiotics. Consumer groups have a really important role to play here in encouraging consumers to question the safety of food produced from meat of heavily medicated animals. And through that, to use consumer power to drive change from global re restaurant chains who could use their supply chain commitments to make a fundamental difference to this urgent global issue. CI wants Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's and Subway to make global time-bound commitments to end the routine use of antibiotics important for human medicine across all meat and poultry supply chains. This year, Consumers International's World Consumer Rights Day saw 75 of our members in 60 countries taking action to call for this change. And they were petitioning, they were doing marches, targeted social media activities, all to get the attention of these global chains who can do something about this issue quicker than legislation. In the run-up to the World Leaders meeting in September, 
CI will be putting further pressure on global chains again to act on this issue and, set and, and step up to the mark, be the leaders that they should be in their industry to set the standard for change.